Hi, I'm astrologer and life coach Penny Dix. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome back if you're one of my regular visitors here. But if this is your first visit, well, a very big welcome to you. And hopefully you will like my style of astrology, my humour. And if you do, I would love it if you'd subscribe. Today, I'm bringing an in-depth look at, um, first of all, at Venus, our planet of love and relationship, going retrograde in the sign of Leo. And I'm also going to mention as well the fact that Chiron, our asteroid known as the Wounded Healer, also turns retrograde today in the sign of Aries. Now Chiron stays retrograde until the end of the year. Whereas Venus, and today is the 23rd of July, just to, to remind you what day it is and what day these two planets are going, or planet and asteroid are going retrograde. Today is the 23rd. Now Venus will be retrograde till September the 4th. It's already been in its shadow zone, which means it's traveled through the sky over the part of the sky and the horoscope where we will experience Venus retrograde. So it's been in shadow since about June the 20th and it will stay in its shadow after it goes direct on the 4th of September. It will stay in its shadow until October the 6th and it doesn't move into Virgo until October the 10th. So we have a long time of Venus, our relationship planet, our beautiful, shiny, sparkling jewel in the cosmos being retrograde. So what can we expect whilst Venus is retrograde? And should we be concerned? Well, I am going to tell you in which part of your zodiac chart Venus will be going retrograde in. And I will be doing that in the second half of this video. I will go through each individual zodiac sign. They will be time stamped, and that will just give you a clue of the area of your life that you can expect this energy. But let's just have a look at what we can normally expect with a Venus retrograde. And, and also bearing in mind, it's in Leo. Leo is the, 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 the planet of, or oh, sorry, the, the sign, the sign of regality and royalty. Venus is the feminine. This is, uh, you know, this is feminine energy in its glory. So Venus will feel quite comfortable because Venus is rules Taurus, which is fixed. Leo is fixed. So Venus is going to feel very at home in, in Leo. However, um, what comes to me around Venus retrograde is that we may see women in the public eye, um, something coming up about them in some, some degree. Maybe they, they change their direction or they, maybe some of them get, become separated or divorced. There could be something of that nature. And I'll come to how it affects our individual relationships in a minute. But I just want to talk about this kind of collective feel of, of that Leo energy, because these are, these are people in the public eye. These are women of prominence. And I do feel we're going to see some news coming up about women who have been or are in the public eye. And it's, it's about, in general, um, I think with Venus retrograde, we experience new emotions, new qualities. It can tend to make us a bit cut off so that we kind of become a bit too introverted to cope with this kind of retrograde energy. And on another, well, another take is that actually it can be quite a good time to enjoy alone time. You know, some people are not very good at being alone. They feel lonely if they're on their own. But you know, there's a kind of rule of thumb that if you're lonely, then most probably you're in the child part 
of your psyche because it's children that can feel lonely when mummy or daddy is not around. I mean, this is a very generalized view because some children are very happy playing on their own. So I'm not gonna go down the rabbit hole of the psychology of, of children and the inner child, but what I'm saying is it's a good rule of thumb to remember this, that loneliness tends to be that there is a part of us usually the inner child that feels abandoned, lost and unloved. Whereas when we can choose to be alone, we are absolutely inhabiting our adulthood and our ability to take care of our psyche on that inner level. And whether it's a good thing or not to learn to be alone, I certainly think it's a very valuable asset to have. And I'm sure many of us learnt a lot about us during the COVID years of lockdown, where people that live alone were alone and really perhaps struggled with having to basically face themselves every day. Or you can be just as lonely in a relationship. If that relationship isn't working well, we can feel very alone. Even in a group of friends, if everyone else seems to be getting on and really having a good time, we can feel so alone if we're not somehow involved or part of it. So that is something of this energy of Venus retrograde. Also remember, Venus is about value, about how we value ourselves. So one could use it as a time for self-reflection to look at, well, you know, um, how to review, if you like, how well have I done? You know, retrograde means review, relook, revisit, go back to, look at again. How, how much do I value myself? Uh, do I, do I put my needs first? before helping others. You know, that's, you know, sometimes what we do is we absolutely exhaust ourselves because we're putting everybody else's needs first before ourselves. So apart from that, what else can we learn about this kind of introspection that can come from a Venus retrograde? But I do think it's a time when we will really review our relationships, all of them, you know, not just close one-to-one, -one, you know, my other half, my partner, whatever. We will review our partnerships. Which ones serve us? Who's on my team? Who's not on my team? We'll look at pleasure and fun, money, beauty. So it's, it, it's a good time to review how we look. I mean, I, as you know, have changed my hair recently. This would not have been a good move to do whilst Venus was retrograde for me, especially as my ascendant is Leo, so it's in my first house. It would not have been a good move, and it may have been that it was a bad cut, or it was just the wrong style at that time. So they, those are the kind of things we need to be mindful of. It doesn't mean don't explore or try out these things. It's just be absolutely sure and perhaps look at the other energies that are around on that particular day before you cut your waist length hair off to shoulder length. So let's see what else we can we can um yeah because here in my notes it's, it's reminding me do not initiate new investments because at this with 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 a with a venus retrograde we can often see that um investments get overvalued and they inflate often during a venus retrograde and then when venus goes direct they kind of collapse in on themselves. They deflate so that Venus retrograde um, can be famous for producing basic global economic uncertainty. 
and that can make matters worse. And if you think about what's going on in the world and the sort of the instability in Eastern Europe, you know, the instability around what's happening with the Kremlin and Ukraine and Russia and also with, with Belarus and the kind of taking over of countries by stealth. You know, there, the, the global uncertainty for the economy is still going to be around, especially as we're also heading towards a significantly important year next year, where we get a change of government potentially in the UK, for example, and in the United States of America. And I believe also Ukraine has elections next year. So there's a lot of important decisions resting on how the economy is when Venus comes out of this retrograde phase. And we will have to look at the transits that it makes to Uranus in Taurus to give us a bit of a clue because Uranus in Taurus, Taurus is all about finance, the world economy. Uranus is about freedom. It can be about, you know, saying one's, you know, speaking one's mind can be about complete upsets, meltdown, volatility. So this second half of the year on that economic level, really um, to use a money market term, it's time to be bearish. This is not going to be a bullish time of year. So don't splash out the cash whilst Venus is retrograde because you might regret it. So let's see what else we have. Yes, what about meeting someone new whilst Venus is retrograde? Is that good or not? Well, it could mean that this relationship doesn't have long legs, that it doesn't actually go the distance. That's one of the problems because Venus rules love, relationship and marriage. And I think one might have to also look at aspects to Juno, the asteroid Juno, to see um, where or how, because Juno is the, the asteroid of relationship and marriage, how well that can play out. But, you know, a new relationship might start and you might think it has absolute potential for becoming the relationship, the best one. But be mindful that you may not be seeing its true state and you may be over kind of compensating for the, uh, the, 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 the faults of the other. So it's really a time to make sure you're not viewing it through the proverbial rose tinted glasses. And because I think if you haven't, by the end of the Venus retrograde, off will come those glasses and you'll think, oh, no, this, this isn't right. This isn't gonna work. So the important thing is, you see, when we start a new relationship, is that we want to be wide awake to see what we're going into. We want to be fully understanding and seeing who that other person is, who they are. And so that is why starting a relationship while Venus is retrograde is not the best time. Will current relationships break up? Well, you know, if they do, then it was because they, would, they, would, they wouldn't have lasted the course anyway. It may hasten the ending of a relationship that really does not serve you, that is not good for your well-being. So whatever leaves your life at the moment or whoever leaves your life, just say, thank you, Venus, because Venus has probably got something much more interesting in the wings waiting for you after she goes direct and has moved well and truly into Virgo. So let me just have a little look at this event chart before we 
move on to your individual zodiac signs because I know you want to know about that because we need to look at this Chiron retrograde because Chiron up there in Aries in the 11th house goes retrograde a few hours after Venus turns retrograde. Venus is down there in the fourth house, um, still conjunct Lilith. We all know what that's about. So, <laughs> um, and I would say be very careful having affairs at this moment because whilst Venus is retrograde, you're much more likely to get found out. I, I just feel it's not the best time. So um, I'm just, just throw that into the equation. Now, when Venus goes retrograde, we've still got the energy of that Mars opposite, Mars in Virgo opposite retrograde Saturn. And so there's still a little bit of a sense at this beginning of this retrograde of people getting hot under the collar, irritated with each other and saying the wrong things. Chiron goes retrograde today till the end of the year, till about the, I think it's the 26th of December. I didn't write it down. And Chiron will stay retrograde and it will, it, you know, people that are having their Chiron return and that will be people who are around about 50 years of age, 51, you're the generation that have Chiron in Aries. You need to check out your personal chart to see if Chiron is going back over your natal Chiron because it will bring some kind of event or resolution around perhaps an ongoing health issue that can come up with this energy. But the event chart, interestingly, is again sort of fixed energy. We've got Taurus on the ascendant with Uranus conjunct the ascendant in Taurus, but in the 12th house. There's really a sense of there's going to be a very different scenario in relationships by the end of this this Venus retrograde, I can tell you. It really is going to a very different kind of visual scene, I think we're going to see. And with Scorpio on the descendant, Scorpio, sorry, on the descendant and nothing in the seventh house, it's a bit like, um, well, they're not there. And you know what? That's okay, because let's just wait and see who may be waiting in the wings when the time is right. So don't, don't panic. Don't expect to go out and meet the love of your life over the next six months, because if you do meet someone that you feel strongly attracted to, um, it's quite likely that it will falter. And I know that's a bit dull and boring and it's not very exciting, but it's just how it is. You know, we're still in the grips of this grand cardinal cross as well. So we've got that energy to contend with as well. And so relationships that are struggling will just, just finish. They will just kind of burst apart, burst apart at this time. So that's really what I feel. And I think that, um, and looking at that sun trine, um, sorry, sun in Cancer trine Neptune in Pisces retrograde, um, I think this is, you know, there's going to be a lot of unrealistic daydreaming going on and hoping that things, maybe the hoping that relationships repair. One of the things that can come up during a Venus retrograde is that somebody from the past can come back. Now that may be a good thing, depending on your own personal natal chart, but it may be that they're coming back just to remind you that that's what you don't want. So there's a thought. Now let's move on to your individual signs. And at this point, the magical chart will pixelate and disappear. Well, that's the general plan. So let's start with Aries. So for you, this is about love and kind of love affairs and relationships because, because Aries, it's in your fifth house, but this is also the house of creativity. 
and of beauty. It's, it's, you know, it's a Leo house. It's about the regality of things. It's about your value. I would concentrate your energies, Aries, with this Venus retrograde into creative pursuits. Because any love affairs or new loves that come in at the moment, I just think you may have fun for a few weeks or even a few months, but I just don't see it lasting. Okay? So creative pursuits. Let's move on to Taurus. Taurus, it's your fourth house. So this brings in the home and family. Well, of course, Venus retrograde here can actually mean renovations. You may actually be making some, some changes to your decor and just kind of upgrading things a bit or just bringing in a little bit more luxury to your, um, to your domestic space. And with regard to family, um, it may be that you actually connect with family members that you've not been in touch with for a while. Um, but that may not be as satisfactory as you'd hoped because, you know, sometimes we, we don't see cousins or brothers or sisters or, you know, family members for some time, for months or even years. And we connect and we expect the other person to be just as they were when we last met them. We forget that we've all changed, that we've all moved on. And that's something of what you're gonna experience with this kind of energy. So Taurus, um, just be mindful of that. Let's move on to Gemini. Gemini, well, your third house of communication. I think you need to be very careful how you talk to your loved ones with this energy here, because you, on one level you might find you are, just keep repeating yourself. And they're going, oh, for goodness sake, you've already told me that. Stop waxing so lyrical, because Gemini, sometimes you do get carried away with, which is lovely, with the romance and the kind of, charming kind of part of you with with the the other but you know sometimes you just need you know sometimes people just want a little bit of reality and and basically just you know some kind of good good kind of grounding physical grounding rather than um soliloquies and sonnets so be mindful of that i also think you are one of the signs that could be hearing from um, past loves or past relationships. I think that is a strong possibility for you. Let's move on to Cancer. So for you, Cancer, it's in your second house of finance, how you make your money. This can also be your relationship with money. So let's take it as your relationship with money. How is your relationship with money? Is it something that you work with, really kind of think, yeah, bring it on. I, I, I can do with this abundance. I can work with this abundance. I can make it work for me. Or is it something that you think, oh no, no, I, I really shouldn't. And I shouldn't charge that. I've got to think of, you know, people that can't afford things. And do you undercut yourself? I think this is going to give you a chance to review, relook at how you value yourself and what you offer in terms of the work that you do, whatever that may be. That may even just be in running a home. So it's not necessarily a business because I know a lot of you out there are retired. So it doesn't have to be about a career. It can be about actually just managing our day-to-day -day life. And I do feel that that's part of this energy. Let's move on to Leo, the star of the cosmos for the next few months with our lovely planet Venus, goddess of love, Aphrodite, relationship, marriage in your sign. Leo, well, you're probably gonna have a bit of a makeover, aren't you? 
but be mindful. Remember what I said at the beginning, probably not the best time to do a complete change on how your hair looks. Just saying, may not be the best time. Don't go pink or purple. Well, if you do, it'll grow out, but I'd just be mindful of that. I think also it's about you being a little bit more reflective. And again, about how you value you. And how do others value? How do the significant people in your life value you? You may be doing a lot of inner reflection on that. Because, you know, Leo, you're very good at going out there and being the star of the show and enjoying the, the round of applause for all the Leos. You're enjoying that, you love it. But how congruent is that? Or maybe you doubt it or wonder how congruent it is because maybe you doubt your value. Maybe, you know, it's a bit like this, um, you know, one of the current kind of words of the moment, you know, the imposter syndrome, where you think, well, I'm doing all of these amazing things, but I don't know why anyone's, you know, watching me or following me because I'm not really sure I know what I'm doing. You know, it could be that kind of energy. So this is actually about you reviewing what you do. And it may not be a bad thing because I think it'll bring in a little bit of grounding for you, Leo. And actually, I think at the moment you need a bit of fixed energy to look at, just look back at what you do do, how you do it, how you put yourself out there, and I think what we're going to see by Christmas, when when Venus is, is out of her shadow and well and truly moving forward through the cosmos, we're going to see quite a different Leo character. One with much more substance. One with different dimensions to your character. Somebody of... You know, it's that, what was it? The woman of substance, the man of substance, the person of substance. You will be a force and not in a aggressive way, but you will just be a powerful, um, a person of, of powerful elegance and power. Okay, let's move on to Virgo. Virgo, 12th house. So 12th house. Oh dear Virgo, please don't go down that rabbit hole of, do people really like me? Am I okay? Does maybe what I said the other day wasn't very good? Perhaps they're perhaps I'm overthinking it. I don't think I'm overthinking it. I really mustn't do this to myself. I'm sure I'm worth something. Oh my goodness! And he's come back into my life, or she's come back into my life, or they've come back, and I really don't know whether I want them or not. So there's going to be a little bit of that around which is not very helpful, is it, Virgo? So Virgo, just chill. Chill a bit because, and this too shall pass, because I really feel, Virgo, that um, this Venus retrograde, you need to use it to review how far you've come, how much you've grown, how much you've developed on that inner level. Because you have, Virgo, don't doubt it. You know you have. And you know, Virgo, I'm talking to you. Now let's move on to Libra, harmonious Libra. Libra, this is your ruling planet, Venus retrograde in your 11th house of the community at large, of that kind of sense of being in touch with the otherliness of, the, of, of human consciousness, with the projects and ideas and kind of plans you would like to bring into reality. I think it's actually going to give you some time to catch your breath, Libra. I think you've been kind of absolutely going at lightning speed, run, run, running around, getting something going, getting this done, 
initiating here, initiating there. Oh, Libra, this Venus retrograde is going to give you a chance to calm down, to take some time out, to actually perhaps, oh, God, you know, I know it's not the ninth house, but go on holiday. Have a little bit of a break. Have a rest. Revisit, reflect, redo, and re kind of look at the friendships in your life and think about the ones that, those people that really value you because they're on your team. And maybe you've not been connecting with them enough lately. So maybe you have to send that message. All right, let's move on to Scorpio. Scorpio, 10th house, career. How's this going to pan out for you? Well, I think it's okay. I think it's about slowing down with certain elements of your work. So if you're working, if you have a career, this is about slowing down. This could see uh, some old avenues opening up that may be worth going down, but you may find that they are just a dead end again. So it may be that you really have to just dissect which of these avenues could really be lucrative because remember, Venus is about value and money. And there's something here about your earning capacity. Which of the avenues that are open to you at the moment really bring in benefit for you? Bring in the gold, because that's what you want. You want that alchemical gold, because what you actually want is not just the financial remuneration. And that may be difficult this second half of the year with a rather tricky economic climate, but you want, the, you want to be validated and you want the self-worth, but you want others to validate you. You want others to validate you for your work. And I think that's in part quite a lot about what this Venus retrograde is for you, Scorpio. Let's move on to Sagittarius. And I've never said this before because I feel it's a little bit naughty, but I had a friend that used to call Sagittarius Shagaharias. I thought it was quite funny. Anyway, I daren't say it really because some people might get affected or rather offended. Anyway, Sagittarius, going back to your given name. <laughs> sorry, I don't mean that personally about you, Sagittarius. I just think it's quite funny. Anyway, this is your ninth house of high learning, education, travel. If it's to do with travel, then it may be that you want to revisit and relook at places where you've had a lovely, lovely time. That may be part of what is to come with this Venus retrograde for you. If it's about your education or about your learning new things and, and just embracing new kind of topics, then I think it's about um, just taking a bit of time out and looking at actually what really works best for you. So not laying out money on courses that you're never going to do. You know, it's very, it's very easy because these things pop up online or on YouTube, you know, offers, you know, 30 euros here, 30 euros there. This will teach you how to be, a, you know, whatever. And actually, you know, we think, oh yes, what an excellent idea. And then they go into our filing system of our computer and we never see them again. And we spent out 30 euros or 30 dollars or 30 pounds. So I think you get the drift of what I'm saying, Sagittarius. So let's move on to Capricorn. Capricorn, it is your eighth house of joint finance. Hmm, you know what? 
I think you need to tighten the belt a bit for this second half of the year, Capricorn. I think there may have been a little bit of splashing the cash throughout the first half of the year, which is not terribly typical of you, Capricorn, because you are quite a frugal sign. But really seriously, Capricorn, this second half of the year, be careful with that Venus retrograde. On a positive note, um, you may find that investments come to fruition. They, um, they, they, um, what's the, they get realized. That's the word I'm looking for. They are realized. So that is, is something that can happen. But it may be that the value that you had hoped for is not quite as good as what you'd, you'd hoped for. Th this is not a time to sell those works of art if you've got any lurking in your attic. Not a good time at all. You will not get the proper true value. So this is something about that. I think also it's about just being mindful that anything that um, that doesn't serve you in terms of maybe there are items that you have around you that you'd like to sell apart from those works of art. Again, I would probably wait a bit. I would wait until the end of October. And also that'll be after summer and no one spends so much time on social media platforms looking at what's to buy at this time of year, at least not in, not in my experience. So let's move on to Aquarius. Aquarius, because this is in your seventh house of significant relationships. No, it doesn't mean all your relationships are going to end. It really doesn't. But if you are in a good, solid relationship, you may be reviewing with each other ways that you can make the relationship ultimately grow and be better. You may be looking at ways to bring more fun and creativity into your relationship. It may be about showing each other more respect. And, you know, it's, it's like, um, I've often talked about this, where we, we, don't, we don't have a conversation and really listen to what is being said to us, especially in a relationship that's been going on for, 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 for months and years and years and years. We're, we're only half listening because we're already formulating our answer. And so that this may actually be about cooling it, calming down, and listening. Listening to what's being said. Because we miss so much, not just in the words, but in the nuance. It's what's behind the words. So that's one experience. Will relationships break up? Well, as I say, you might review. Someone might come back into your life. If it manages to survive longer than its shadow phase, and after Venus has moved into Virgo, then maybe it will be built on solid foundations and has a chance of working out. But just be mindful that it ain't the best time to start a new relationship. Now, finally, we come to my lovely oceans of emotions, my Pisces. Pisces, this is in the sector of your chart that is to do with your day-to-day -day working routine. It's also about health. It can be about, um, it can be about pets and small animals, and it can be your daily routine. But you know, I wonder with it being Venus and Leo in your sixth house, whether you've been burning the candle at both ends. I think this Venus retrograde is really asking you Pisces to take some time out and rest. Otherwise you will be revisiting the doctor or whoever your practitioner of choices to go to, the homeopath, the Reiki healer, 
whoever it is that you choose to take care of your woes and ills, the acupuncturist, whoever, then Venus retrograde in your sixth house could see you having to do that. It may be a good idea anyway to go and see a practitioner to discuss how you are. Do you give enough attention to yourself? Do you have someone who listens to you, Pisces? Because if you don't, if you're the one that is there for everyone all the time, you, you know, you've got Saturn in your sign at the moment. Saturn is really asking you to be a little bit more boundaried and structured. So be mindful of that and take some time out for you over these next few months through August, September, and into October, rest, Pisces, my lovely oceans of emotions. Right, well, um, I can't remember whether I got rid of the sign or not, the picture, the diagram, but if it hasn't pixelated out, it's pixelating out now, or if it's already gone, my apologies. <laughs> I can't remember. Anyway, it's okay, I'm, you know, <laughs> what I'm talking about. Okay, let's pull myself together again and not be all Venus retrograde -y. And thank you so much for joining me for this Venus retrograde, 23rd of July till September the 4th. Doesn't go into Virgo out of its shadow till the 10th of October. So please remember to like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, WhatsApp it, Put it on Facebook, do all those wonderful, lovely things. And please remember also to subscribe to my website where exciting things will come soon. Maybe I'll get them sorted out during this Venus retrograde. Who knows? Sometimes you can flip the astrology and make it work for you. That's my plan anyway. So you work on your plan, I'll work on mine, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.